It's your boy, Shitaki Smitty. Good day, everybody, in my little fungi armata. Welcome to my newest video. As you can see, I'm using a different voice as compared to my Romeo and Juliet video, because I have decided I am a much classier mushroom. As I am aware, none of you are wondering what else is new with the channel. Well, it turns out that someone commented under one of my videos and asked would I like a shout out on his channel. And of course, I respectfully said no. Now, today's video will be about a nuisance wildlife management military operation, also known as the... I can already tell y'all are wondering what does a mushroom know about war. Fret not, I am a veteran of the Badger Wars. And you will learn this lesson with footage that is the closest thing I have to war, Lego Star Wars. So following World War I, you've got a lot of discharged veterans who served during the war given land by the Australian government to take up farming. This farming area was generally in Western Australia. Now when the Great Depression happened in 1929, these farmers were promised subsidies by the Australian government to increase their wheat crops. And since no reasonable person has ever trusted their government, by 1932 wheat prices have continued to fall and matters started becoming pretty intense. The farmers prepared to harvest that season's crops, but refused to deliver that wheat. And of course, on top of that, to make things more difficult, the arrival of as many as 20,000 emus happened during this period. They migrated after their breeding season. The emus were attracted to the farms because of the additional water supplies made available for the livestock. The issue being with this is that the emus ate the crops the farmers were trying to make and put holes in their fences, which allowed other things like rabbits to get in and also ruin the farm. What do you think a bunch of ex-World War I soldiers wanted to do to solve this issue? They wanted to shoot shit with machine guns! So they ended up sending a message to the Minister of Defense at the time, Sir George Pierce. While the minister ended up agreeing, there were conditions. Guns had to be moved by military personnel, troop transport was to be financed by the Western Australian government, and the farmers would have to provide food, accommodation, and payment for the ammunition. So this quote-unquote war was supposed to start in October of 1932, but due to the rains that were happening, it didn't actually start until November. On the 2nd of November, a small group of men traveled to where 50 emus were sighted. The birds were just out of range and they tried to attempt to herd the emus into an ambush. Really ended up not working and they were said they were able to kill a number of birds. But no number is actually known on how many they got. The next significant event happened on the 4th of November. They managed to establish an ambush near a local dam and were able to spot more than a thousand emus headed towards their position. This time the gunners waited for when the birds were closer before opening fire, but one of the guns jammed after only 12 birds were killed and the remainder scattered before the rest could be shot and no more birds were sighted on that day. As the days went on, the group of men started moving further and further south trying to get emus. After six days have passed from when they originally started, the men have used up to 2,500 rounds of ammunition, and the birds killed was uncertain, ranging anywhere between 50 birds to 500 birds. Following negative coverage by the local media and a discussion between members of the Australian House of Representatives about the operation, the military was withdrawn and all guns and personnel were taken back. Due to the attempts being wildly unsuccessful and the military withdrawing, the emu population kept being a significant issue for the crops, causing the farmers to ask the military again for more help. 
The military then turned around and reported that 300 emus have been killed in the initial operation. However, I am not able to find a source where they got that number from. Due to the military report and more requests by the farmers, the Minister of Defense assumed military efforts and defended the decision in the Senate explaining the soldiers were necessary to keep the agriculture threat of the emu population down. Going back into the field November 13th, the military found a little bit more success, claiming to kill as many as 986 emus using 9,860 rounds of ammunition, saying about 10 rounds per kill. After that marked the end of the emu war. So their wildlife operation not going as planned and receiving a lot of media attention, mainly the negative kind, caused the government to deny assistance when asked again in 1934, 1943, and 1948. Due to these factors, the Emu War goes down as history as a loss for the Australian military and being the only known military to lose to birds. Now during the first attempt, the military observed packs of emus having what seemed to be a leader. The military men should have acted on this and went after the emu's supreme leader like we did after the badgers. As you all know, Hillary Clinton is a lizard in a human suit, but what many don't realize is she's also a badger in a lizard suit. Well, now that I made that joke, if I end up disappearing, you all know why. We're sorry, the number you have dialed is not in service at this time. <laughs>